am so excited to meet you. I'm excited to meet you too, Simone. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, when did you realize you wanted to be a writer? I was about your age. So I always loved making up stories, but when I was in fourth grade, I had a teacher who started us writing poems and stories. And it was the first time I realized that a person could just do that because I'd never met, when I was younger, writers didn't really, didn't travel around and meet kids in their schools and stuff. So I'd never met a writer before. I didn't know it was a thing I could be. So once I, I got the idea that maybe I could be a writer when I grew up, but that's all I wanted to do. It's so cool. What was the first story you wrote? I wrote, the first story that I found that I wrote, wrote down was from kindergarten. And I couldn't write the words myself, but my teacher wrote them down for me and I drew the pictures. And it was about a witch with long green fingernails who ate babies. Yikes. <laughs> I don't think babies would taste very good. I don't think so. And, you know, I'm not sure where I got that idea from, but but she was the picture of her. And she's so happy. She's got this witch has got a big smile on her face. And I guess she enjoyed being a witch. What do you do when you're not writing? I have four kids. And this year I am been doing a lot of homeschooling because of the quarantine, but mostly I just write and hang out with my kids and read and sleep and eat. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Have you based any characters off of your kids? I've never based any characters off of them, but they have inspired a lot of characters. My oldest daughter, her name is Magnolia and she one day when she was four years old asked me why there were no princesses who wore black and that inspired the princess in black story so i named the princess in that um, princess magnolia after her and my twins i wrote a short story once where i included a lot of dialogue from things my twins actually said when they were four years old um, and things that they do and say inspire stories but i've never made a character that's just them my mom was wondering what, if you were if you were on purpose writing flower names for Princess Nisbet and Princess Magnolia. Yes. So it started with Magnolia because of our daughter. And that was such a pretty flower name. We thought, well, let's, let's name all the princesses after flowers. And so I went through lists and lists of flowers. And I came across Sneezewort. And once I saw that name, I was like, oh my gosh, it's just such a great word. And originally we had named Princess Sneezewort Princess Crocus, but when we changed her name to Princess Sneezewort, it just changed everything about her character and it made her so much more interesting. And then she became a major character in the series because her name was so interesting. I, I like I liked her because she was so awkward. She's like, I'm afraid I'm af I don't like hide and seek because I'm afraid of never being found. Yes, yes. I thought that that would be an interesting twist. It's kind of a mean thing to do to an illustrator though, because we wrote things like um, Princess Sneezewort blended in with the drapes, Princess Sneezewort blended in with the end table. And we just had to write that. And then the illustrator has to find a way to make that true. Well, she did it, like made it actually look like, well, yeah, I can totally see how that would work in real life. That's the problem with Lewin Pham as the illustrator. and. When you're working with an illustrator that brilliant, she always complains that we throw her so many curveballs that she that we ask her to do so many crazy things in the books, but she keeps being amazing. So <laughs> it's her own fault for being a genius. <laughs> My favorite series that you've written so far is Princess Academy. Can I ask some questions about that series? Absolutely. Why did you put a song at the beginning of each chapter? Oh, that's a great question. So when I was writing it, I, um, I, something that was important to me was to create a really clear, specific setting. I wanted um, the idea of home and where Mary is from is such a big part of the story and why it matters. Uh, so I wanted the readers to really understand her home as much as she did. And when we're looking at different cultures, um, you look at things like um, how they dress, what kind of things they eat. 
but songs and stories are a huge part of a culture. And so I thought if I just did a snippet of a, of a song at the beginning of, of each chapter, it would give the readers an idea of what kind of world she lives in, what's important to people who live on Mount Esco, what kind of things do they think about, what would they write songs about and sing about. So it was really to draw the reader in. I, I, I liked the song, and I liked to repeat them in my head or out loud, repeating them until they said nonsense. Oh, that's a great idea. If you were Murray, would you make the same choices as she did? This is an excellent question because, so usually when I write characters, um, I try to make them different from me as much as possible. And partly because it's just interesting thought exercise for me is to think about what other people who have different personalities would do. But with Miri, she's more like me than any other character that I've written, except for maybe <laughs> the memoirs, because I wrote some memoirs that are actually little me. But besides that, Miri is more like me than anyone. And so I think I would, yeah, I think I would do the same, make the same choices she did, um, all the same mistakes and all the, hopefully the good things too. What was your inspiration for, for the Stone Lender? When I was studying um, mining, quarrying stone, some of, I was mostly looking at like marble quarrying and some of the details about it, uh, it they just got really complicated. And in order to create this village on top of a mountain where there was so much, um, where their livelihood depended on stone, just all the details about how heavy it is and how they transport it and all that, I just, I started to think, oh, I just don't want to weigh down the story with all that. So I was like, hmm, what if it's kind of like marble, but it's not as heavy and easier to transport? Ta-da, that's the amazing thing about writing fantasy is you can just make up details. Yeah. And also I wanted the lender to be a big part of the magic system in it, the quarry speaking. And so having a stone that doesn't really exist allowed me to, to give properties to it that the real stone doesn't have. That's really interesting. I should probably think about that more. Thank you. About how tall would Mount Eskel be if it was real? It's um, so they live on the on the sides of Mount Eskel, but they don't live at the peak. So the peak rises up way above the village, and the peak. Oh man, you got me because I I'm trying to remember. Did I say that the peak always keeps snow in the winter, or does it does the snow melt all the way in this? I mean, in the summer. I can't remember. Well, I. I have, um, I live in Utah and outside my window, I can see the Wasatch Mountains all year long and they lose their snow um, in the summer. What the tallest one, Mount Timpanogos, keeps it for a long time, but eventually in the summer, it becomes all green, green and brown. So I imagine Mount Eskel to be taller than that, but I actually don't know how high the footage of that is. Definitely not as tall as like Mount Kilimanjaro or Everest or something. Yeah. But, but taller than your average mountain. Probably. I think, I guess I just have to use my imagination then. Mm, that's always a good solution. So I read the epiplog for Princess Academy, The Forgotten Sisters. Are you going to write a Prince Academy series? <laughs> You're so smart. Um, I have not started one. I have never written one. But... That is something that I've long thought about doing. And I kind of have in the back of my mind of doing that. There's actually a couple different books for Princess Academy. Uh, one of them that I've outlined actually in great detail that I have not written. And the challenge for me, honestly, is when I was younger and I wanna be a writer, I thought, oh no, how can I do it? I don't have enough ideas. And the older I get and the more I write, the more ideas I have and the more books I want to write and also the less time I have because of children and everything. So it's always a challenge of, oh, I want to write so many books and figuring out which one to devote my time to. But perhaps someday, would you want one of that? Would yeah. you want that book? 
I just got an idea that maybe you could assign the children jobs to help you write, write faster. To get my kids to help me write? Faster. Yes. If they did, if I got my kids to do all my other stuff, if they did all the shopping and the cleaning and the cooking and they answered my emails for me and did all that kind of things, then I would be free to write more. Should I, should I tell them that brilliant plan and tell them it was your idea? <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> you have a new book coming out called Itty Bitty Kitty Corn. Can I ask some questions about that? Yes. Is Itty Bitty Kitty Corn about a, uni a kitty with a unicorn horn? Yes, she is a kitty who wants to be a unicorn and wants other people to see her as a unicorn. And she makes a little horn and ties it on her head and hopes that her friends will see the way she sees, see her the way she sees herself. That's so cute. Yeah. I know you have many other books in the series. Which other ones do you recommend for me? Well, let's see. You did, you've read the Princess Academy series. So have you read Real Friends? Real Friends is a graphic novel and that's a true story. So that's about me at your age, actually. It's from me ages five through 11. And the, I had friendship troubles in elementary school. So it's a true story about that. And that's also illustrated by Leigh Wynn Pham, who also illustrates Princess in Black and Itty Bitty Kitty Corn. So she and I work together a lot. Are you guys friends? We are best friends. Will you read some of Itty Bitty Kitty Corn for us today? I would love to, thank you. All right, should I just go ahead and do that right now? I took the cover off because it's easier to handle. Isn't she adorable? Oh, Lay Wynn Fam and I made this together. These, you have to just, just look and look at these end pages because they are so amazing. All right, itty bitty kitty corn. Kitty thinks she might be a unicorn. A horn sits atop her fuzzy head, pointing up, up, up to the sky. She feels so perfectly unicorny. Look at me, says Kitty. You're not a unicorn, putty pie, says Parakeet. You're curled up like a cat, Fluffy Fry, says Gecko. Kitty stands tall. She prances on her pod clawed unicorn hooves. She gallops on her eensy weensy unicorn legs. Look at me, says Kitty. Right page, oh, it is. You're still not a unicorn, fuzzy hiney, says Parakeet. You have a stubby tail, teeny tiny, says Gecko. Kitty closes her eyes. She concentrates and poof, her tail puffs up fat. Look at me, says Kitty. You're never going to be a unicorn, funny foo, says Parakeet. You meow in your sleep, Miffy Mew, says Gecko. Nay, says Kitty. Nay, nay. She sticks her pink nose in their ears in case they didn't hear. Nay! You're a cat, says Parakeet. And that's that, says Gecko. Still, Kitty's unicorn heart beats harder. She lifts her front hoof and sweeps her magnificent tail. The sun is low, the shadows are long. At last, she looks exactly how she feels. Ha ha, look at me now, yells Kitty. Wow, says Parakeet, astonished. Woo, says Gecko, impressed. Finally, they see me, thinks Kitty. Until, clop, clop, clop. Gecko points with his fat tipped finger. Now that's a unicorn.
The unicorn brandishes his horn. He sweeps his magnificent tail. He neighs a mighty neigh. Neigh! Suddenly, Kitty feels no bigger than a ball of lint. Flop, flop, flop. Pardon me, says Unicorn. Yes, squeaks Kitty. I so admire your fuzzy ears and silver whiskers, says Unicorn. You do, says Kitty. And I wondered, Unicorn looks right and then left. Did you know? What, says Kitty. Did you know, says Unicorn, whispering now. What, what, yells Kitty. Did you know, says Unicorn, that I am a kitty corn? Kitty gasps. Her tiny tail twitches with joy. Yes, says Kitty. I see that now. You are a kitty corn. You are a fuzzy, furry, adorable kitty corn. Unicorn nods. I knew that another kitty corn like you would see. Yes, says Kitty. I see you. Kitty and Unicorn are both kitty corns. Kitty trots on her soft, teeny paws and Unicorn pads on his huge golden hooves. They both like to toss their manes and brandish their horns. They both like to scamper after bumblebees and stretch out in a patch of grass. And when the sun is low, their shadows merge till you can no longer tell one from the other. And then again, these amazing end pages. You just have to look and look at them. Lewin Fam is so awesome. That's a sweet story. I like it. Thank you very much. I liked it how the unicorn was wearing a headband, and then and and Ki and Ki and and Kitty was uh, was wearing a head a, a headband too. But they and they were both trying to, to like look like each other. Yes, they're both kitty corns in the same way. I like this last image where she's giving him little whiskers. <laughs> she's got a paper horn and he's got kitty ear headband. And one of the things I did as I was writing this is um, working on this with Lei Wen. I wrote down lots and lots of lists of things kittens do and the words we use to describe kittens and then words we use to describe unicorns or horses and make sure that I used all those words to describe both of them because they both are kittens and they both are unicorns. Yeah. I thought that was sweet. And I don't think the parakeet and the- Gecko. Whatever, and the gecko could say that it could call her tiny because in real life, wouldn't they be smaller than her? <laughs> that is a very good question. Yes, I think you, you definitely picked up on that. They're calling her teeny tiny, but also they're pretty teeny tiny too. If she's teeny tiny, then, he's te then they're teeny tiny. Exactly. <laughs> we are working on the second book of that right now. And it is just so fun to work on something with Lei Wen Pham. Usually uh, when people do picture books, the writer writes the whole thing and edits it and does all the revisions and then sends it to an editor and then the editor reads it and then decides what artist that they want to work with it. And then they work with the artist on making the pictures. And often the illustrator and the writer never meet, don't know each other, never talk or anything. But since Wen and I are such good friends, we actually wrote this together side by side. And we were both coming up with the story and pitching ideas back and forth. And um, it really was a collaboration of two best friends working together. That's so cool. Thank you. I like how Kitty, I like how one Kitty Corn was purple and the other Kitty Corn was pink. Yeah, yeah. One with the purple, the long purple mane. I love the, uh, super long, fabulous hair. When we were making it, I told Wynn, let's, let's just make that unicorn 
give that unicorn the most fabulous long purple curls. And I was like, go 1980s, just a big old big hair perm. <laughs> Such a fabulous unicorn. My brother um lo loves um the Princess Magnolia and, and the Princess in Black and all those characters, especially oh. yeah, especially the Goat Avenger. Yes, the Goat Avenger. My husband and I are working on a new story right now that's that's just um, the Princess in Black and the Goat Avenger together on this epic, epic quest, epic fantasy adventure. So we're excited about that because they've formed this sweet little friendship. You can tell from Kitty Corn and, and other stuff we did, well, friendship is one of my favorite things to write about. You, do, do you think that the, the is the Golden Avenger still gonna think that the Princess in Black is one of his goats in disguise? Does he still think that? <laughs> what do you think? Do you think the Goat Avenger knows it's really Princess Magnolia and she really knows its stuff or do you think they really don't know? I think none of them actually know, but I think but I think but I think that um that I but I think that he's decided that she's probably not a goat. I think she he probably knows she's not a goat. I have a lot of kids asking me, when are they going to find out who is really the princess in black? And I say, probably never, because, because it would be more, identities are fun. It would be more exciting if no one knows, and she has to keep it an absolute secret, and then she has to look right and left every single time. Exactly. It makes the whole thing more exciting. That's what I think, anyway. The pony, every, the pony, that? The pony looks right and left, too. Yes, frimple pants, before frimple pants gets changed every time. Lucky. <laughs> when it's safe, will you come to the Writers Museum? I would love to. Oh my gosh, we miss traveling so much. So I write a lot with my husband. And um, one of our favorite things is traveling and meeting readers and also working with Lewin Pham. And she lives in California and I live in Utah. So we only see each other when we tour together. And we miss so much going out in the world and touring and meeting readers and talking to people. If she was there, she would draw your picture in your book. That's um, a pretty amazing thing that Lewin does with kids. That sounds so fun. The next time you guys are on a tour, I want to go on vacation to wherever you're going on a tour. <laughs> or maybe we'll go where you are. Okay. But I don't want to. I don't want you to lose out on, on an opportunity for a vacation. Maybe we should just say we're going to start touring in the Caribbean, and then you just have to go on vacation in the Caribbean. Because what else would you are you going to do? <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, it is my pleasure. Thank you so much for interviewing me. It is amazing to talk to a well-read fan like you and you are so eloquent and composed and confident and I appreciate that so much. Thank you.